Okay, um, I am going to try to use this integrity tool to uh, show you all again. We went over this in class, but um, I wanted to do it and post it so you can watch it as you prepare your second assignment, which will have you plotting these bathymetric profiles and turning them into me uh, as an assignment. Uh, and there's one thing that we did in class that is not the best, and so I wanted to give you the best information for how to do this. So I'm going to do it. Uh, using the data from that we collected off of the peer, um, you'll see this is the same exact spreadsheet that we had that I gave you on Angel. It's got the PA peer transect, the data that you put in. Uh, note that your depths may be different. Um, that's totally fine. I want you to use yours. Um, then I have the Juan de Fuca transect. Those are the data that you uh, are, will be collecting off Google Earth, and then the Mid Atlantic profile, which is the data that. Uh, I gave you. So I'm going to go back to the PA peer, peer transect and plot these. So we did it with a line, uh, if you recall, in class. So I just clicked on line there. And now I'm going to right click in the chart area and select data. And then I'm going to add. And I'm going to add. Uh, oh, you know what? Before I do this, I actually want to do two additional things. The first, as we talked about, is that just for plotting purposes, it's helpful to have negative uh, depth values. It just makes it look better, so uh, uh, or, or look sort of right. So I'm going to make a, another column here called negative depth. I'm going to do this with a function, put in the equal sign, and that tells Excel that you're wanting to do a calculation. And I'm gonna essentially going to take every value and multiply it by negative 1. So there I've got my negative 1. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag this down and that drags that calculation down through every cell here. So I've got now the negative values. You can also just input those by hand. Um, this, that, what I just showed you though is useful if you have a lot of data so you don't have to go through and do every one. And then the other thing that I'm interested in doing is I'm gonna, I want to plot my distances in feet. We did them in meters. This is the distance along the pier. I'm just kind of interested in doing it in feet because that's what my depth are in. So um, there's 3.28 feet per meter. So all I'm going to do is multiply every meter measurement times 3.28. Zero meters is zero feet. But as I pull it down, we should see that uh, in feet, the distances are different. Okay, you don't have to do this, I'm just doing it um, largely just to illustrate again um, the, uh, uh, how to do those, those uh, calculations in Excel, because those are going to be useful later. Uh, anyway, so I'm back to my plot. I'm going to select data. I'm going to add, just like we did before. I'm interested in depth in feet relative to mean lower low water. Now I'm going to click on the values, and the values I want are these ones, and I'm going to press enter, okay, and that's what I want, that's, that's my profile right there, we're accustomed to it, I'm going to delete the legend because it doesn't add any value, um, okay, and then now we see that, that, as we talked about before, instead of anything relevant on the x-axis, I just have a lot of, uh, just basically, there's a number for every data point, so I'm going to go ahead and right click again, say select data, and I'm going to add my distances in feet as my labels on the x-axis. Okay, great. Now, here's the problem that some of you may have noticed, um, but we didn't talk about in class. By doing it this way, um, Excel doesn't recognize that what's on the x-axis are data values. And in this case, we have uneven distances between where we collected data. So, for example, between 0 and 82 feet is the same distance as between 82 and 114. Even though, if this x-axis was actually related to the distance along the pier, uh, this, um, this next value should be 164, twice 82. Okay? So, what, what Excel is doing is treating these as categories, not as values. We want, it to, we want Excel to treat them as categories, so I'm gonna or as values. So I'm going to show you how to do that. 
um, I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and I'm going to insert another chart and then this time I'm going to choose scatter. This is really what we should have done and I'm going to choose this option down here. Uh, this is going to give me a straight line with markers and I'm going to move that box right over here. I'm going to make it exactly the same size as this one above. Okay. Now I'm going to select data again. I'm going to do the exact same thing, except this time when I say uh, enter data, it's going to give me a slightly different box in that it has X values right here. So this time around, I am going to do, uh, I'm going to put in a slightly different um, uh, series name. And I'm going to select my X values. My X values are the distances. There they are right here. And now I'm going to select my Y values, which again are negative depth. And I'm going to say OK. OK, and this time, um, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to delete the legend here. And you will see that the profile is slightly different. And that's because now Excel is treating uh, the, the values in the distance column as values, not just as categories or labels. And so the profile actually represents real life better. So this is actually what we want to do. Um, now for your assignment, you're going to be asked to, to, to make your plot um, communicate. So in this case, I'm going to go up to chart tools. I'm going to say, I'm going to put titles in there. I'm going to add a uh, axis title down here. I'm going to say this is distance in feet. Okay, now I'm going to go back and add a vertical. This is depth in feet relative to mean lower low water. Great, looks good. Um, let's see here. I don't necessarily like this on the bottom, so I'm going to. I'm going to, uh, let me show you how I did that again. Anything in Excel, you can, you can select it and right click and it'll usually give the option to edit it. So I'm going to choose that one and I'm going to see if it allows me to select, to select here um, where it ends up on the screen. It may not, uh, it's somewhere in here. Uh, whether I can find it quickly is a different matter. Let's close that. I'm going to try to I'm going to do the same. I'm going to select on this axis. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say format axis. Uh, axis options. Here's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to put my uh, ticks on the outside. I'm going to do my ticks above the axis. I just like that better. Um, let's see. I'm still trying to figure out if I can get that label up there. So far, no go. Somewhere, I'm also going to get rid of these. I don't like these grid lines. So I'm going to say no line. Great. Okay, looking good. Um, what else do I want to do? Outside of moving this, I might just try to move it up there and see what happens. So that seemed to work okay. I'm going to move that title down there. Huh, I kind of like that. Okay. So I've got my profile. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change um, some of my colors here. I'm going to choose a black line. And I'm going to change, I'm going to get rid of my markers, uh, I think. Let's see what that does. Oh, it's getting there. Marker options. I'm going to say none. There we go. Okay, just going to get rid of my markers. Just my choice. I think, uh, I think it kind of looks better. Okay, so there's my profile. I like it. Um, so again, notice this was done using the scatter option and not the line option. So that's the better way to approach it. Note for your mid-Atlantic profile, it doesn't necessarily matter because these are all uniform distances. The distance along the profile is uniform. For your Juan de Fuca Ridge transect, it'll matter unless you did exactly uniform distances. So it does matter. Um, so do that. Okay, uh, the next thing that I wanted to just uh, demonstrate 
um, uh, just to sort of review was measuring with Google Earth um, and so here I've got the uh, Here I've got the Baffy profile exercise.kmz that's right off of Angel. And I'm going to go to the Juan Fuqua Ridge transect and double click on it. Google Earth zooms me right into it. Okay. And I am going to click and drag. And then I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so we talked about two methods. I'm going to show you both. Uh, the first is using, or they, they both use the ruler tool, which looks like this. You click on this little ruler symbol, and the line option. I'm going to choose the units. Kilometers is fine. Um, so in this case, I'm going to click on a point. You've got to make sure that the little green dot appears. And then I'm going to go out, oh, 10 kilometers. Okay, note that I'm not going to click yet, but I am going to note the, uh, the um, depth, which is on the bottom of the screen. Um, uh, you'll note that it says negative 156 feet. So in my Excel spreadsheet, uh, I would write down distance 10 kilometers, depth negative 156. Then I might choose to move out. 20. Okay, here I've got distance 20 kilometers, depth negative 306 feet. I'm just going to move the cursor that that measuring line is going to follow, but just to show you where the depth is located on the screen, it's right here. You'll note it's changing now because in Google Earth, wherever your cursor is, it's measuring an uh, estimated depth there. Okay, I'm going to move out to see if I can do it without oh you know what you can do so I'm gonna get a measurement at 30 feet I'm gonna click and hold my mouse and when you do that you can drag the screen and let go now I'm gonna get my measurement at 30 negative 411 feet 40 negative 987 feet we just dropped off the shelf right there and you can see you can slightly see that on the screen but it's very clear in that depth uh, data. Uh, okay, um, so that's one method. The next method you can use is using what's called a path. And uh, let's see here, I'm going to actually go back and see if I can clear that line, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna use a path and um, so what I can do with the path is more or less the same thing. I can click on the starting point, make sure that little green dot appears. Where is it? Okay, there it is. So this may be useful. You know, we, we so so here I've got 10 kilometers, and I'm going to get a um, depth of negative 156 feet. clicking along, click and drag. So here's 15. So this one is perhaps in some ways useful, in some ways perhaps a little less in that um, you can't, so here's 20, negative 304 feet. Um, it doesn't tell you the distance along the line as you move it. It doesn't tell you till you click. So you could potentially pass a point of relevance Although the other side of the coin is that you can sort of just click along here. You don't have to do every 10 kilometers. You could say, all right, negative or 30.84 kilometers, negative 418 feet. I'm just going to go some distance to a point of interest. I'm going to choose something right on the edge of the shelf here. Okay, here's 37.29. I'd put that into my Excel sheet along with the depth, negative 686. And now I know there's some slope here, so I'm going to go sort of less. That's a distance of 2 kilometers, 39.11 kilometers in my Excel spreadsheet as distance. Depth of negative 903. It looks like there's a drop-off right here, so I'm just going to go a couple more kilometers. 
So just over, and now I'm at 41 kilometers, I've moved two kilometers horizontally, but the depth dropped off by about 400 feet there, uh, 300 some feet. So, you know, I, I can get a lot of data in here, put it in my Excel sheet, spreadsheet, and it would plot just fine, uh, especially using the scatter tool that I just demonstrated. So hopefully this um, helps to give you some ideas about how to do the assignment too. Um, and at the very least, you can just sort of see how uh, I've done it and follow along in Google Earth or Excel.